so I stuck I stuck with it for a little bit, and by the Hi, I'm Faz Shakir, editor of thinkprogress.org. I'm pleased to be seated here with John Podesta, the president and CEO of the Center for American Progress. For the past three months, he's been heading uh, the transition team for Barack Obama, serving as one of his three co-chairs. Uh, yesterday on January 28th, we solicited comments from our Think Progress community, uh, questions for John Podesta. We're now going to ask him some of those questions. So on behalf of the Think Progress community, thank you for making yourself available. And let me happy read. To do it. I'm glad to be back at the Center for American Progress. And we're happy to have you back. So let me read to you the first uh, most voted on, most highly uh, recommended question that we received. Um, and it comes from uh, a user named Curtis Teff. And he writes, why is President Obama giving up so much to appease the conservatives? They've already proven they're not interested in working with Democrats. They would rather have America fail than President Obama succeed. America voted for President Obama into office because we want a complete break from past policies, not a compromise. What's your reaction to that? Well, I, I think that if you look at the bill that's making its way through the House and then will be taken up by the Senate uh, this week and I think voted on and put on the President's desk by President's Day, there's uh, what you see in there is the thrust that he laid down early on, really back in December and, and in January. I think he was willing to have a dialogue uh, with the Republicans. So far, that dialogue has been largely one in which it's good natured, but the Republicans don't seem to really want to come to the table and, and, and talk seriously about what needs to be done for the country. So be it. That's that's their choice. But I think he he did want to change the tone in Washington. He wanted to. Uh, talk to people across the political spectrum. He wanted to open up the government uh, to people from uh, all uh, perspectives around the country. That's what uh, whitehouse.gov is about. That's what the transition uh, change.gov was about, to try to solicit ideas uh, from across the political spectrum to meet the big challenges. But I, I would uh, not confuse that with an idea that he's compromising on his big goals of trying to uh, deal with the, with the very difficult economic circumstances we face and deal with the big challenges the country faces on energy, education, health care, and the other things. One of the prevailing and common and most uh, powerful sentiments in the comments section amongst the questions that we received was this concept that the, there's no accountability for Bush, um, illegalities, uh, crimes, uh, misdeeds. And uh, there, I want to read to you one question. Uh, that captured the sentiment, but this was prevailing, and many people offered similar thoughts. And that is, does Obama plan to create some kind of commission to look into past abuses of our obligations under both domestic law and foreign treaty? Um, this is kind of a common thread throughout all of them. Are, is there going to be prosecutions for war crimes? Many others asked. Uh, your conception of whether there's going to be any kind of accountability uh, measures in this era? Well, I think that there, uh, it, I'm now speaking for myself. Uh, I think that uh, obviously these are judgments that are going to be made by the team that, that has been put in place. I think he's uh, put together a very strong team with uh, Greg Craig in the White House Council, Eric Holder at the Justice Department, and uh, the rest of the national security team. I don't think they'll tolerate the kinds of abuses that went on during the, uh, during the Bush administration. Uh, he's already taken action to close Guantanamo within a year to uh, deal with the issues surrounding uh, torture and the, uh, and, uh, uh, and and the other set of questions around uh, 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 around uh, the way we're uh, dealing with prisoners that are that are that are captured. So I think he's done a lot already. I think that there is room to go back and take a look and try to do. Uh, a lessons learned uh, re review at, at a minimum to, 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 to determine exactly what happened, what went on, to give a full accounting to the public. I think the public would like to see that and expect that. Whether that results in prosecutions are, are judgments ultimately that, that federal prosecutors need to make. Uh, on health care, uh, is single payer universal health care off the table? Um, there's a lot of concern that the approach that Obama is uh, offering is not a single-payer universal health care approach. Um, your, your response to that? Well, I, look, the, the uh, uh, Senator Obama laid out his health care plan uh, in the, in the uh, c context of the campaign. Uh, uh, so did the other Democratic candidates. They blended together some ideas. Uh, I, you know, uh, we take some credit for uh, 
for having pushed forward a, a, a basket of ideas that we thought could achieve universal health care, bend the curve uh, of health care spending in this country, uh, ensure that people uh, are not bankrupted by their health care costs, that, that, that they have access to high quality health care at a, at a reasonable cost, and, and that the, that the health care system doesn't, isn't one further cause to uh, add burden uh, and wreckage to the U.S. economy. But he laid that out in the campaign, and that, and uh, and I think that he's going to pursue the structure of reform that that he put forward in the campaign. That's what Senator Daschle has said in in the hearing that he had in the in the uh, so-called Help Committee b before Senator Kennedy and others. Uh, that's I think why the team he's assembled uh, are uh, ones who have great expertise in 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 pulling together uh, the threads that will ensure uh, quality uh, health insurance and quality health care for everyone, uh, expand uh, and build on the public programs, Medicare, Medicaid, provide a public option to people, uh, provide the kinds of uh, supports that to make sure that small business can offer their employees uh, health care, uh, and really put a big emphasis on, on delivery, on wellness, on keeping people healthy, et cetera. I think he laid that all out in the campaign, so to the extent that uh, you know, people quarrel with that. Again, that goes back to to ideas that he put forward when he put a health care plan on the table back in 2007. Uh, of course, the Center for American Progress did, uh, uh, or, uh, did the first forum with the uh, SEIU in the spring of 2007 when the, the, we invited all the candidates, only the Democrats showed up. Uh, but again, those ideas were out there for all, almost two years being debated. Uh, de he debated him with Senator McCain during the course of the general election. So I don't think people should be surprised that in the direction that he's going. And I think it's going to be a direction that could be successful in this Congress and finally deliver on the promise of health care reform. An interesting question from one uh, commenter uh, who wrote, I'd like to know what it was like working with the Bush administration during your transition. How were you able to get a man who has usually been so divisive to work together in order to meet your goals? Well, yeah, I, I think from the very outset of, uh, you know, the, the, uh, uh, the senator-elect, uh, <laughs> uh, I still have trouble going from senator to president-elect to president, <laughs> but uh, Senator Obama asked me to, to uh, put together the structure of the transition uh, in the course of the summer. We really got up and going in early August. I think I met with Josh Bolton, President Bush's chief of staff, right after Labor Day for the first time, uh, and they were very open, very cooperative. Uh, uh, I, I uh, had the occasion to see uh, President Bush, but I, largely the uh, interaction was with uh, the, the chief of staff and his deputy, Blake Gottesman, and they were, they were quite cooperative in giving us uh, the, the access that we needed to make sure that we got the job done to get our people in the federal agencies. There was a statute passed in 2004 that permitted us to have uh, more than 100 people cleared with security clearances on election day, so that they were able to go right to work uh, in the federal agencies, and including in the in the Justice Department, the security agency. So that I think we did, uh, we were extremely efficient and effective uh, at doing that. We couldn't have done that obviously without uh, the support uh, of the outgoing administration. I thank them for that. Uh, another question: How much of the flurry of regulation weakening and last-minute government appointments done by Bush in the closing days of his administration does Obama expect to reverse? Well, that that is certainly on the table. I think one of the first acts that that uh, Rahm Emanuel, the new chief of staff at the White House, did was to kind of freeze what he could freeze uh, in terms of regulations moving forward, so that our, our, the new cabinet. Uh, secretaries can take a look at those, but I think there's also a process of going back. Uh, the, 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 during the course of the transition, executive orders were reviewed. Some of those were are being reversed, will be reversed in, in, the, in the coming days. Uh, uh, the uh, questions around uh, uh, regulatory action that, was take, that took place that may have been effective uh, can still be uh, undone or reversed. Uh, the order that uh, the president-elect that the president uh, signed, uh, the memorandum that the president signed uh, that uh, instructed the Department of Transportation to move forward with the 2011 CAFE model year, also changed the methodology, uh, suggested to the secretary at least that he change the me methodology going forward. So a lot of this will take some time. The, uh, the, uh, they tried to, to put in place 
a lot of midnight regulations, as it were, uh, and those will take some time to unravel to the extent that they uh, were, went, were, had become effective, their effective date had taken place before uh, the new administration came into office. Uh, but, you know, I guess I liken that to cleaning out the stable. They'll have to, <laughs> there, there's, an, uh, there's a good deal of work uh, to be done to reverse the worst excesses of the, of the administration. Uh, Ken Salazar, I think, spoke at the, uh, maybe at the White House today uh, on this topic of, of uh, the, the last minute activities to, uh, to, uh, to uh, permit oil and gas drilling right up to the edge of, of uh, the uh, monuments that have been designated in, in, in Utah, which would threaten those monuments. And I, th I think that, uh, again, the new team will have, uh, they'll, they, they want to move forward with the affirmative agenda, and I think that's their primary res responsibility, and that's where they want to go. But they're going to also have to go back and clear out and clean out uh, the things that were done uh, over the whole eight years, but certainly these through these these midnight regulations, with respect to personnel, which is the other side of that mm -hmm. question. Again, I think that was something that uh, that while while uh, may may have been legal, I think you'll have to go back and look at that. It certainly wasn't within the spirit of of the way uh, 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 it, there was there was a, you know, the press reported before January 20th, the burrowing. Whole offices burrowing in yeah. political appointees into, into career lawyers, uh, one story in the Washington Post, into uh, all the uh, lawyers in a particular unit in, in uh, I think that was also at the Interior Department, if my memory serves right. me. Uh, but, you know, so I think that they'll have to look at those personnel actions and, and uh, if, the, if it's appropriate, try to reverse them, and if, it's, if, if that's not possible, to try to uh, build a new team of people who support the goals of the of the Obama administration. Uh, an interesting outside the box question here: Did you ever consider scrapping or massively reorganizing cabinet level positions? Um, the c c questioner noted that you had made a decision. Uh, the, the, the transition team had made a decision to elevate the UN ambassador position up to a cabinet level, and so there was a reorganizi reorganizing going on, and they're wondering whether you had considered eliminating things like the Department of Commerce or subsuming its responsibilities under other departments or breaking up the Department of Homeland Security. Your thoughts on reorganizing government, were that, was that ever considered? I think the, the biggest concentration in the transition was on how to, how to get the right personnel into those positions and how to organize the White House to be effective going forward. So a good deal of attention was uh, was uh, taken on how to reorganize the National Security Council, how to stand up this Office of uh, Energy and Climate Change that Carol Browner uh, is running, how to put together uh, the, uh, the Office on Urban Affairs, how to make those things all linked together with a, nat a, a, a reinvigorated National Economic Council. Uh, with respect to cabinet reorganization, uh, you know, obviously that takes a good deal of time, energy, and attention uh, you have to uh, obviously work with partners on Capitol Hill. Uh, most of that takes legislation, or probably all of it takes legislation to, to accomplish. So that seemed uh, a task for later in the process. I think that what, uh, that what President Obama wanted to do was hit the ground running with a program that could get the economy stabilized and then uh, growing again to take on these big challenges. That, and I, the other thing I think that he's put a, a, a high priority on is uh, is the question of performance. What agencies are working? What programs within agencies are working? How do you measure those against the, 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 uh, the standards that he wants to uh, put on the table? How do you get rid of the weakest performing uh, programs uh, and invest your money in the things that will produce the greatest results uh, for the country and for, and, and, uh, and for uh, the people in the country? So I think that there could you it, there could be follow on. Uh, DHS is is an organization that uh, you know was created just within the uh, last few years. It's had a lot of growing pains trying to put together. There's been suggestions about taking, uh, for example, FEMA out back out of the uh, DHS. But I think right now I think his emphasis was let's get the right people in there. Let's get good managers, people who are effective. Uh, people who believe in the mission of the agency uh, try to get that done uh, expeditiously. N you know, normally the cabinet gets selected and, and confirmed in the early days, but w we've uh, put a heavy emphasis on going much deeper into those agencies uh, and then assess whether with 
uh, his people in those agencies uh, what reorganization needs to take place and, and you know, how to go forward from there. Uh, and, you know, th those are, those questions end up being, uh, to some extent, how you reorganize within an agency and then wh where are things, you know, crossing over and you could do, you could do uh, uh, more, you could uh, operate more effectively if, if you change the organization. But there's a lot of capital that gets expended in doing that. And I think he wanted to get program first, organization, th that, that ma massive organization in its proper place and in its proper sequence. Uh, we're running up against the clock here, so just two final questions. Uh, one is uh, a commenter notes that Mike Lux, a progressive liaison to the transition, um, expressed his view that if Obama is going to play conciliator, conciliator in chief, uh, someone else on our side has to play the role of attack dog. And um, uh, this person asks, who will play the part of the progressive attack dog? <laughs> well, Faz, I'm looking back at you. <laughs> I think, I was, uh, well, how was it the think progress want to raise its hand for that mission? <laughs> if, if called, we will serve. <laughs> All right, I feel better. <laughs> okay. Well, let's, let's wrap it up with this like final question. Um, and this is a, a question from uh, somebody who asks, what are the ways for citizens and communities to help President Obama? Well, look, I think he's called people uh, to both to service in their own communities, uh, but to kind of stay engaged. I think one of, one of the things that we uh, attempted to do just in the transition through Change.gov was to kind of open up the dialogue. We, uh, under Se Senator Daschle's leadership, we held uh, over 8,000 uh, 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 house and community uh, dialogues on health care reform and, and, uh, and to generate a lot of interesting and new ideas uh, on uh, on, uh, uh, from, from that effort, which I think will help uh, inform the debate going forward. We had, uh, we did uh, uh, Q&A sessions like this uh, with senior people in the transition. That's been carried over to, to uh, whitehouse.gov. I think the, the president expects people to stay engaged with him, to offer uh, their uh, thoughts and ideas, but to also to stay engaged in trying to make the political system work uh, again in this country by uh, being engaged with members of the Congress at the community level with their governors in their states uh, to, to uh, offer their own service at, at, at the community level either at, at a full time on a full time basis in, in service organizations or uh, part time uh, through uh, through the uh, variety of ways in which people can serve in their in their own communities uh, I think he's going to uh, he's one of the interesting innovations that I, that I mentioned in, in the White House is to, uh, to create an office on social innovation, social entrepreneurship, to reach out to the many nonprofits that are doing work around the country to try to harness them uh, in support of making our country better. Uh, so I, I think you'll see the way he ran an activist campaign, uh, he will run an activist presidency to try to draw people in, bring millions of people into the system, try to get rid of the Washington cynicism that so pervades uh, this town and, and deal directly and interact directly with people uh, to try to make their, their communities better, the country better, and the world better in the days ahead. John Podesta, congratulations on running one of the smoothest and most efficient and fantastic transitions in history. And thank, uh, you. thank you for doing, making yourself available to talk with the Think Progress community. Uh, ha always happy to do it. Thank you. Thank you.